thank you for being here on a weekday night. And um, I think the video has already kind of framed the issue from a particular perspective. And uh, I hope that we'll be able to get other kinds of perspectives from the panelists as well as from you, the audience, today. So as we know, last month, both the upper and lower houses of parliament passed amendments to the Evidence Act, and this was done without any debate. Um, and the newly amended act, as you've seen from the video, presumes that a person is guilty of criminal or offensive content if it's published under his or her name, on his or her device, or on his or her internet network accounts. Now, the Barisan National Government, for those of you who have been following the news, has said that the amendment, particularly section 114A, was made to hold internet users responsible for what they, they post on the internet. And when winding up the bill in Parliament, the de facto law minister, Nasri Aziz, said that um, because of anonymity on the internet, it made it really difficult for the authorities to go after cyber criminals and those who defamed others online. And so purportedly, the act was amended to protect people who were being uh, attacked by online users. On the other hand, we've had civil society, including CIJ, and political observers who see the amendment to the Evidence Act as an attempt by the Barisan National Government to control the internet, especially since we're all expecting the general election to be called really soon. CIJ itself, as we know, is hosting an online petition against the amendment. And Mas, can you tell us as of today how many people have signed? Yeah, 2,270. So it's about 2,200 and 200. And CIJ is saying that it will uh, present the petition once it reaches 5,000. So it's kind of like a halfway mark right now. So please do tell your friends about it. Um, and our panel tonight have studied the Amended Evidence Act, and they are all of them, I think, one to please, right? And we have with us one legal expert, uh, one human rights and communications expert, and two tech journalists who will shed light on the repercussions of having the Evidence Act that we have today. Uh, and and I'll just introduce Cheng Yong before I get him to speak. Cheng Yong is the KL Bar IT Committee Co-Chair and he's also a member of the Bar Council Intellectual Property Committee. He regularly comments and writes on issues pertaining to social media and internet laws. And his latest piece, which was published on lawyerbureau.com, is called Grave Repercussions for Internet Users. <laughs> Regardless, it's um, Salam Satu Malaysia or Salam Satu Mongolia. Uh, this is, this, my part is purely non-political. Uh, what I'm going to speak about is actually against a bad law. A really, really bad law to government our internet. It affects our daily lives. It affects how the court works. It affects all the internet users. I think uh, a lot of you have read uh, a lot of coverage on the internet, uh, a lot of coverage in the newspaper uh, regarding this, this law. Uh, but I think that there are a few things I need to clarify. The law is not enforced yet. Um, someone wrote on the, you know, I think, I can't remember his name, he said that the law is already enforced on 1st of June 2012. Uh, that is not actually the Evidence Act number 2 that we are talking about. That is actually the first uh, amendment to the Evidence Act and that has nothing to do with uh, online uh, internet publication has something to do with uh, mutual reparation of uh, businesses. But in any event, uh, what I'm trying to push today is actually to convince you and convince everyone, uh, all your friends, to actually work against or try to push this away uh, by, by giving all sorts of pressure to the government to withdraw this act. I think you all, uh, before Actually, there is actually a purpose to this act. In the explanatory note of the bill, Evidence Amendment Number 2, uh, they say that it is to provide uh, some sort of uh, presumption of fact in publication in order to facilitate 
and proving identity of anonymous person involved in publication through the internet. This is merely an explanatory note in the bill. And of course, uh, we all understand, I acknowledge that there are a lot of trolls, we call them uh, internet trolls, who cause all sorts of problems on that. People say all sorts of nasty things online, all the keyboard warriors. If you go to the Malaysia Insider, you look at the comments, then you understand. Lah. Or you go to Malaysia Today, there's even more of them there. Uh, and these people, they comment uh, all sorts of things without thinking that they will get in trouble. But of course, uh, with the law, the government thinks that they can actually do something about that. Unfortunately, I do not agree. Uh, one thing about this is that they want to prove the identity of a person online. I think we all know that once we are online, we try to keep ourselves anonymous. That is because to protect our own privacy. I mean, you can't, I don't want to be putting my full name there, I can't be putting my home address, I don't want to put my IC number online so that people can identify me. If you look at my, my personal Twitter, it's actually, it actually has nothing that refers to me. It's just a nickname and a picture of Doraemon. That's all. So that is because I, at, when I was still employed, I don't want my employers Googling me and say what I say online. So I'm sure all of you here who has Twitter will probably have a blog or some maybe Facebook. Uh, do not put your full name, definitely. Or do not put your home address, do not put your IC number there. Clearly, we all want to be anonymous online. That is to protect ourselves. And in fact, and, and because of this, this bill, it says that it covers all, all anonymous users. Uh, you are all, all caught in this act, and regardless of whether how they want to put it, and, 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 and how, and, and when we come to court, we sometimes we expand the scope of the, 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 the amendments, uh, sorry, the, the, the law. And here, we, when we, after, I think probably after a few years, we probably about forget about looking at the bill, we look straight into the section and we see how the act is, the act is like. Just to, I, I know that you're, you all like, don't like reading law, but I think I just need to clarify how this section actually looks like, how the amendment actually looks like. To read to you, a person whose name, photograph, or pseudonym appears on any publication depicting himself as the owner, host, administrator, editor, or sub editor, and, and the next word here, I think you have to all, all uh, take into account and uh, pay attention, or who in any manner facilitates to republish or republish. The publication is presumed to have published or republished the content of the publication unless the country is proven. Basically, if you republish something, you are deemed the publisher. If you have taken, uh, let's say, you have seen a nice, uh, very funny tweet online, you retweet it, you are deemed as a publisher. If you saw something on, on your friend's Facebook and you say this is interesting, you will share it, you are deemed as a publisher. Or if you uh, saw an article online, you copy and paste in your blog, you are deemed a publisher. Very plain simple. But on a cynical side, if someone takes you an article, writes something terrible, something seditious, something racial, and puts your name on it, and you put your photographs on it, you are deemed to be a publisher. Uh, I think Marina Mahadeo has actually wrote an article on her blog saying that, and, public, and she posted in the Star saying that this could happen. And she said that the grammar, the, the words, the Star writing is all not, uh, it's not like me. But nevertheless, people do that. People take your article, put your name in, and get you in trouble. And that is subsection 1. Subsection 2, uh, a network service provider is something like your Unify uh, or your 3G data, basically your data connection online. So if you, uh, if any posting, you, is in any uh, postings online, there will be an IP address. An IP address is all assigned by your internet provider. And if the internet provider I mean, when you go online, you post uh, something, and then it, it shows up, it comes from the IP address, the team, the publisher. Regardless who uses the computer. Someone comes to your house, logs into your Wi-Fi, posts something, and you are the publisher. And unless you prove otherwise, 
how are you going to prove otherwise? How are you going to show that someone actually parked outside your house, access your Wi-Fi, and actually pull something on it? Do you have the, do you have the special capability to lock into your own Wi-Fi wi -Fi system, look at the locked files, to see whether someone has actually locked to something? Do you have the means to do that? And they are now pushing uh, the burden to you. This law doesn't only apply to criminal cases, it applies to civil cases. Imagine all internet users, you know, normal guy to fire house, normal to wife employee, executive, or a normal housewife or someone who, who, who is uh, you know, retired, gets sued by someone of, of, of well made or of certain means, comes to the high court, slaps with injunction, injunction, we go to court, we do. Fees is at least 50,000 to 100,000 ringgit, and you are there to defend in a high court case as a normal, non working middle class citizen. How are you going to approve? How are you going to first get a lawyer? Secondly, you need to get technical uh, assistance from someone who has technical abilities to look at all this model, look at all these uh, routers, and look at all these all these devices that you have to prove that it didn't come from you. And imagine if it's a criminal case. In more, the standard models of is for the police or any other uh, authorities. If there's anything that's been posted, first thing they, the police is launched and they want to investigate, most of the time they take your PC, they take your devices. Once they take it from you, how are you going to prove it's not you? How, how are you going to access your own PC and show that this, at this lock time I didn't access anything? The, the, the thing is lying down somewhere in the exhibit room. And then the presumption of, of publication of subscription tree. And this is quite simple. It is come from your comes from your PC, comes from your handphone, comes from your iPad, comes from any of your devices, electronic devices. Check on your uh, one minute to okay. wrap up. And what we can do is we can get more time for people to ask you questions. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, next one, I think um, you have seen this in the start. This is actually from taken from my article, uh, Great Repercussion from, for Internet Users, uh, which the start has published. Uh, I think, just, to, just to, to close this, this law is not a way to overcome the problem of all these internet trolls. We need, when we come to that, we need, we don't need laws like that, we need something more technical, we need expertise uh, for people to trace people online. It's not, the law is not the way to solve, to solve this, it's basically putting the blame to someone to, take, to eat up, in Chinese we eat it, we say they call it eat the dead cat. So, and now, uh, if, if you look at the if you read the news recently, the, the UK government is actually giving out a new law, passing a new law where they actually help uh, internet forums or internet companies to protect them if when someone asks for the details of uh, the, the users who post their military comments. Here we are moving the other way around. We are, here we are trying to, trying to punish people who provide these services. I think can I get you to just stand there for a minute because I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, uh, just based on, on your presentation, I guess what you're saying is that what the authorities are doing is actually passing the burden uh, of investigating and proving that somebody actually committed a crime or an offence to citizens, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, rather than the state which is being funded by taxpayers' money right. playing that role. Do you see this, this passing on of responsibility in investigating crimes uh, as a trend that has been developing in Malaysia? Apart from this particular case, do you see it happening in other instances? Well, um, presumption has always been around. Um, presumption of fact. If you look at the Dangerous Drugs Act, uh, if you have been you know, carrying a certain weight of drugs, then you are deemed to be a uh, trafficking with the certain drugs, but that has been quite long ago. But now, if you ask me, I think recently there is none except for this, pushing the burden on, on internet users. And does the Bar Council have a sense of uh, what brought about or um, what motivated this particular thinking? No, unfor unfortunately when this bill came about, uh, I think some of you may know, uh, when bills come about, 
Fire councils generally we, we don't get consulted, unfortunately. Uh, when bills are passed, are, are first table in Parliament, before that, they are not uh, released to the Bar Council. Uh, they are apparently under the Official Secrets Act. Uh, we can't look at it. So, unfortunately, that's the position. That, that's what I understand from some council members. And one final question from me, which is, you had mentioned that 114A is not yet enforced, right. even though it's been passed by Parliament. What needs to happen for it to be enforced? Um, minister, certain ministers should, would gazette it and not stick it. Should be now three again. We gazette the enforcement date. What's the window? The, the window? Any time. They could, they could just die a natural death. They could just be passed. Like the our DNA Act has been there. It passed, but it was never enforced. Personal Data Protection Act has been passed since 2010. It's now 2012. It's not enforced yet. So uh, there are a lot of bills that have been passed on, uh, by the parliament, but it's not enforced. And that's really good to know, isn't it? Because then it means that there is a window for people to do something if uh, citizens believe that this is a really bad piece of law. Thank you very much, Cheng Liao. And I'm sure the audience will have other questions for you. Um,